liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we just want to thank you for today. We thank you that um, uh, we find the joy to just be here, to serve you, to praise and worship your name, and to just lift you up uh, this afternoon, Lord, in our service and in our midst. Father God, we pray that you bless each one of us, and I lift everyone who's here this afternoon, even our brothers and sisters who are not able to join us today. I pray that you embrace them with your love and presence. And I pray, Lord, that you will remind them the importance of fellowship, Lord. That we have brothers and sisters whom we have not seen in a long time. We pray that you reach your heart uh, to them and uh, just be gracious to them and bless them wherever they are, Lord. And today, Lord, um, we offer you our hearts, our minds, all that we are before you and we just want to bless your name tonight give you all honor and glory and thanksgiving uh, for who you are in our lives our our living god our almighty father and uh, a great provider and our friend thank you lord jesus for today and uh, be glorified in jesus name amen let us continue to uh, praise God with uh, some songs uh, with our praise and worship team. Was heavy, but 
chains break and the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air I'm breathing. I am a future, my eyes are open. Just when you call my name, I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day. You call my name.
Thank you to our praise and worship team for leading us into the presence of God through those um, wonderful songs. And now um, we are going to our scripture reading and may I request everyone to please uh, unmute your mics as we are going to read the scripture together. All right. So today we would be reading from uh, Proverbs chapter four, thirty thirty-four. Let's begin with our verse thirty. I went past, I went past the field the of the Lord, past the vineyard of someone who has no sense. Thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds, and the stone wall was in ruins. Wall was in ruins. I applied my heart to what I observed and learned a lesson from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little holding in the hand of God. And poverty like, like a fib, scarcity, like, like, a like a drama. But for his word. And now today we are going to hear uh, the preach from. Thank you, um, Sister She. Thank you, praise and worship. So uh, we're doing the sermon, the message now, right? Okay. I hope uh, everybody can hear me. Just put the thumbs up. Okay. All right. Okay. So. Um, 2021 has come for us, uh, like it's come for us in a, in a flash. Some of us are not ready yet. Some of us are so much waiting for the new year. And we are now on the second Sunday. And some of us still feel the effects of the past year. A lot has changed actually since the electric clock was invented back in 1840s. Now we can keep time on our smartwatches. We can um, check notifications of someone texting us or giving us an, um, a meme or any funny videos, right? We don't have to wait for greetings to come in the mail. Um, smartphones are there for us, tablets and laptops. The entire pace of life seems faster and even with our leisurely walking, it has become uh, not just really leisurely, but uh, it has sped up. Uh, no longer should we be walking leisurely now, but we should walk on a brisk pace for exercise. And this is especially true in uh, cities and, and can have a negative effect on the health of people. Um, Scholars would say that we're moving just, we're just moving faster and faster and getting back to people as quickly as we can, like never before. And Professor Richard Weisman even said that this is driving all of us to think everything has to happen now. There's what we call the tyranny of the urgent. And we are somehow, we feel that we are. Um, in bondage by time, where in fact time is one of those five T's, right, that God has given us uh, as a gift. We have our treasures, our talents, our um, um, temple, and then we have time. And time is one of those gifts that been, we've been asked, to, we've been told to steward properly, that we all have equally we all have the same amount of time. Um, the, prob the thing is, how do we 
manage it. And so for some of us also, we might think of um, the solution to all our woes. If you are someone who is uh, who feels like there's no structure in your life right now, everything is a mess, everything is chaotic, right? The kids are at home, I work at home, <laughs> you, you, you are working from home, or uh, even if you go, if you are able to work uh, outside of the home, when you come back, the house is a mess, and uh, there's things to do, there's uh, the, your to-do list is up to here, right? And we are so frazzled, we are so burned out. There's some people like that. But some people also, as we will study today, they just feel to, uh, that they don't want to do anything. They just feel that, okay, the past 20, the past year has been a setback for me and my life. Therefore, I just give up. I just quit. I'll just treat 2021 as it is, as it comes. You know, uh, I won't have any structure anymore. I don't want to have any plans set up. So I will just take things as they come. Okay, Sarah, Sarah. Whatever will be, will be. Okay. And maybe you are like that, and maybe you're uh, someone who, who in, in, um, in the, in efficiency, is someone who doesn't make wise use of their time. Uh, in Ephesians chapter five, verses fifteen to sixteen, it says, uh, "Be careful then how you live, not as unwise." people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. I don't think you, you have to be convinced that the days that we live in are evil. Just look at the news. Uh, our neighbors to the south just experienced one of uh, an, an unprecedented um, event in the, life of, uh, in the life of people, especially in the capital where they had to be uh, ransacked. Uh, the halls of the Senate and the Congress have to be uh, infiltrated and the, the security breached by hordes of people who were protesting. And they were not, they didn't go in there to make peace. They were in there to actually harm someone. And they wanted to make a point. Not too long ago, we also see those protesters on the streets burning down buildings and vandalizing. So we see that uh, not only in, in does these things happen in uh, uh, countries like the Philippines or India or um, those developing countries, but also here in North America. Indeed, the days are evil. But Paul, the Apostle Paul tells us to make the most of our time. But not just make the most of our time, to make wise use of our time. What is using time wisely? What does it mean? So we tend to think here that Paul is probably talking about uh, what we call time management. And in one sense, he is. But in another sense, uh, he's, very, he's very much um, in a very more important sense, actually. He's saying something that's different. He's saying something else. Uh, our message today is entitled Making Wise Use of Our Time in 2021. Uh, and maybe you are that kind of person who, who just doesn't want to do anything. Is that God's will for you? Or maybe you are a student and you're all caught up. It's only the start of the year and you're already, uh, you're a high school student and you, you probably are already up to here with your school load. And because, you know, you still have one more episode of your favorite uh, uh, series on Netflix or you are just about to finish with uh, playing with someone else uh, uh, online with online games, you're probably thinking, well, I'll probably put that off because I'm already up to here with my workload. So let's look at the scripture that we have today and uh, let's read through them. In Proverbs 24, verses 32, 34, it says there, I pass by the field of a sluggard, by the vineyard of a man lacking sense. 
And behold, it was all overgrown with thorns, and the ground was covered with nestles, and its stone wall was broken down. Then I saw and considered it, and I looked and received instruction. So this is where we're at. We have to consider this. We have to consider what the writer of Proverbs is telling us. Once we considered it and looked at it, then we are now receiving instruction. And with that, I would like to look at the character here that's being shared with us, that's being uh, stated here is the sluggard. The sluggard. Who is the sluggard? See, si one tamad. <laughs> or one for all, right? <laughs> all for one. So who is the sluggard? He's someone, it's described here, is someone lacking sense. He is lazy or indolent. So if you really want to learn from God's words, particularly the Proverbs, we have to live wisely in God's word. And the way to do that is take careful consideration of God's word and what it instructs us to do. In fact, I will just share with you initially four characteristics of a sluggard. The first one being small surrenders. So when you think of yourself, I'm not that kind of person. I'm not a sluggard. Say, parang negative, right? Negative yung, uh, yung connotation of a sluggard. But what it is really is, is, is living an undisciplined life. In, in verse 33 of our passage, it says, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. That's what describes the sluggard. If you see here, uh, there's a word that's been repeated three times. That is what? The word? What is that word? Little. Little, small, in other words. Little surrenders, small surrenders. So in other words, the sluggard here is saying, it's not, it, the sluggard is not saying, I don't want to work. But the sluggard is saying here, I don't want to work just yet. There's a difference, right? Uh, in fact, there's a picture here, I hope uh, it could be shown, of a lion. <laughs> It says here in, in Proverbs 22, verse 13, it says, The sluggard says, there is a lion outside. I will be killed in the streets. Do you believe that there's a proverb like that? It's funny, right? It's a little comical. That's how a, the mindset of a sluggard head is. There's a lion outside. I hope you don't make that uh, excuse to your boss when you call in sick tomorrow. Right? Uh, on Monday, because that's not gonna, it's not gonna cut it with your boss. So for some of us who are allergic of going outside because of the pandemic, you might say, "Well, Pastor, you are told to stay indoors." Well, what's being told here is uh, uh, when we live an undisciplined life. Whether it's we have to work outside, we get have to get our groceries outside, or whether we have some business outside of the home. The mindset here is that every day is a battle. Therefore, if you give up those little things that you're supposed to do today, then you're going to miss out. In fact, that would be the second characteristic of a sluggard. Number two is missed opportunities. Missed opportunities. Um, in verse 31, it says, thorns. So it says first, I pass by the field of the sluggard and by the vineyard of the man lacking sense, which is the sluggard. And what does he see? And behold, I was, it was completely overgrown with thistles or with weeds. The ground was covered with weeds and the stone wall was in ruins. The stone wall was broken down, in other words. So that's what he observes. Some, someone who was walking through a vineyard sees this and that's all he sees. You see what happened here though? Missed opportunities. 
You see, in Palestine back then, if you own the vineyard or you work the vineyard, you have to have certain uh, duties to do before you can get a harvest. So what you do is you roll up your sleeves, you get down in the dirty, and you work the ground, you sow the seeds, you plant the seeds, right? So that in the end, you know, and, and, and then when it grows, then you have to do some pruning. So the goal is ultimately to have fruit. And not only fruit, but you get to harvest them. You get to harvest them later on. But what happened to this person is because he was undisciplined, because he was unproductive in his life, then it led to missed opportunities. A third characteristic is uh, someone who is a sluggard is he always comes up with big excuses. In verse 16 of chapter 26, it says, a sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven people who answer discreetly. In other words, he believes his own lies. He's the only one who believes his own lies. Other people know better, right? And uh, the only lies that a sluggard uh, believes in are the lies he makes himself. He would always come up with an excuse. He would always come up with, uh, with uh, an excuse that, you know, I can put that off later. That could wait. See, if you really look at it, you know, it's just the second week of the month. What have you done lately in terms of your spiritual goals? Yes, you have probably financial goals. You know, I will set up an RSP. I will have my pension uh, fixed so that I can put in some money certain time. Most of us are like that. We are very aware. We are very careful with our secured life, future life. Uh, we, we put in our investments properly. We are very good in that. We are very good, some of us, with our fitness. You know, we know we need to exercise. So you do your exercises every day. But my question is, what are your, what some of the goals you've set for yourself spiritually? Have some of you started a Bible reading plan yet? If you have, are you in the, are you in that portion of Genesis where you want to quit already? There's always an excuse, right? There's always an excuse, especially when you're trying to, to do the work that God has um, commanded you to do. And you would always put yourself and your self-interest before God's work. And I'm not putting a guilt trip here. But how many times have you um, uh, not put, have you, have you put off something that you promised God in the past? You've committed your life to him. You are committed to a life of ministry and service. What have you done for him lately? And it's not just our generous support, our generous giving, right? Uh, assuming you do uh, you have a generous giving lifestyle. But it's also what have you done for others to serve others? This Tuesday, we were supposed to uh, be planning to have that uh, our young people and some who want to volunteer, we will go to the food bank. Now, for now, I believe that's been put off because uh, I just communicated with the um, the people at the food bank, water the food bank, and they say because of the pandemic, we have to wait until the lockdown ends. So they might, uh, we might do it in next month. But have you even considered doing something for the community? Or is it just oh, me, myself, and I? Just my self-interest. You see, why am I saying all this? Because the fourth characteristic of a sluggard would be something that we all might end up with. And that's unfulfilled desires or an unhappy life, an unproductive life, a not so meaningful life. That's what happened here in the sluggard because he, uh, he, he uh, missed the opportunities that was presented to him because he waited 
and uh, he instead, you know, had a little sleep, a little slumber here and there, procrastinated, and he kept on giving his excuses. What does that lead him to? A life of unfulfilled desires. In verse 34, and poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. No one knows when a robber with, with, uh, with a gun would come into your house. And even though you have the best security as possible, home security, you have a video security camera in front of you. If people really want to ransack your place and steal from you, they will, they're able to do that. And nobody knows when they will come, right? So if you continue in the lifestyle of a slugger, then, then you will eventually lead to an unhappy life. In other words, friends, um, an undisciplined life would lead to an unproductive life. And then eventually it would ultimately lead into an unhappy life and, un and unfulfilled desires. So not only that, but if you notice too, the sluggard is not liked by many. You don't want to be with a sluggard. You don't want to want to have a sluggard in your team. Why? Because it says there in, in, um, in Proverbs 10, verse 26, like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is a sluggard to those that send him. So when you, and sluggard being sent your way, it's like vinegar to the teeth, maasim. It's sour. You don't want it. And it's like smoke in the eyes. You kind of um, close your eyes and try to open it. This is painful. You don't want that feeling, right? So the sluggard is also unliked by others. And so after sharing all this, uh, you might say to yourself, well, um, I don't, I probably see myself in that picture for sluggard. I'm not all that hardworking. Sometimes I do procrastinate. Sometimes I, I put things off. Why? Because I'm a victim. You, know, you say to yourself, I'm a victim. You know, there's, there's a pandemic going on. How can I even live a normal life when my mental state is even compromised? I need to see my friends. I, see, I need to see people. I would, I would be um, sharing with you three wise advices so as not to be sluggard. You would want to take note of this because if you are someone who say, um, I, don't, uh, I see myself in that and I find it very hard to practice those, to not practice those uh, things in my life. And I always have big excuses. I always miss opportunities. So what do you do? I have three wise advice. Number one, you have to treat this as a character issue and not just a time management issue. See, even Paul, when he, the Apostle Paul, he knew the problem was the, our fallenness because we are still in the sinful state. We haven't been fully um, uh, um, transformed into the likeness of his son. There is still that struggle every day because we're still in the flesh. Uh, the Apostle Paul knows, and he himself attested to that. He said that there's a, a thorn in his flesh that he wants to get rid of. And there's the, um, the, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. And friends, so... Uh, Treat this as a character issue. In, in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 19, you go back there and say, this way of a sluggard is like a hedge of thorns, but the path of the upright is a level highway. See, in Hebrew uh, poetry, we have, there is what we call a, uh, the principle of parallelism. Parallelism, taken from the word parallel. Mm -hmm. So one road uh, parallel to each other. 
In this case, there's the line in Hebrew poetry, in a poem, for example, that says the first line and then the second line would describe the first line or some follow up to the first line. But then there's also what we call a contrastive parallelism or it is in direct contrast to the first line, meaning, so the way of the sluggard is like a hedge of thorns. We don't want that. But the path, right? So the path of the upright is a level highway. That's what we want, right? We want to get to our destination on a level highway. So there's a contrast here. And what is the way of the sluggard contrasted to? The path of the upright. The sluggard and the upright. Which one do you want to be? So in other words, we have to treat this, friends, as not just, oh, I have to tweak my life a little bit so that I can have better skills in time management. It's more than that. What it is is who you are. What is your identity in Christ? If you've been born again, if you are here today listening and you know the gospel, that it has the power to cleanse you and forgive you of your sins because Christ died on that cross. He rose again from the dead. Now you're able to live his life. Uh, his life is now being lived in you. You are now transformed into his likeness. And that's what it means. To be upright is to be in the likeness of Christ. To be upright is to be godly. To be upright is someone who is the opposite of the sluggard. He is someone who is diligently studying the scriptures, studying the word of God, and applying it, living it out in his life so that others are drawn to Christ as well. So first wise advice, treat this as a character issue. It's who you are in Christ, your identity in Christ that you should remember and live it out in your life so that you are a powerful witness to others. You're doing it because, not just because you want to do it, but because you want to give more glory to God. And then also a second advice is you have to live by the rhythms that God has built into creation. I can show you three rhythms or patterns Steady patterns that God has given us, you know, in the natural world. One is the rhythms of the seasons. What we mean by that is there is a time to plant and a time to harvest. This sluggard that we're talking about, he, did, he missed the opportunity. He didn't do anything. He passed on the opportunity. He procrastinated. Therefore, in the end, he didn't harvest anything. And there's also the rhythms of day and night. You think of yourself, well, I work the night shift, Pastor. <laughs> or, uh, well, I, 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 do, I do continental shifting. Sometimes I work afternoons or nights. Sometimes I work days. And that's fine. What I'm talking about here is those who, if you realize that God has made the day and the night, and there's rhythms to that. You're supposed to work during the day when the sun is out and you're supposed to sleep at night and take a rest. Some of us, we've made the night day and the day night. Some of us sleep in until three o'clock in the afternoon. Why? Oh, because I was up all night. Doing what? Oh, I just have to finish the final episode of uh, Cobra Kai. Or, uh, or your favorite Netflix series or yung Korean novella or some gaming session with your friends. There's also the rhythms of the Sabbath. What do I mean by that? I'm not one who is a literal believer of the, Sab of the Sabbath. I don't believe in a literal Sabbath. Like we are not uh, Sabbathistas, right? We are not the Seventh-day Adventists. We are evangelical born-again Christians. So we don't particularly follow what the Jews would follow in the past because we believe in the redeem, redeeming work of Christ. He has uh, fulfilled the law by his death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the law is no longer for us. It helps us, yes, but it's not the one that would, allow, would make us children of God 
find favor to find favor with God we don't obey the law because no one can follow the law and therefore that sabbath the fourth commandment uh, keeping a sabbath is not really something that we have to legalistically have to follow but there is what we call sabbathing or the principle of it the principle of the sabbath is that you take a day in a week to take time to rest take time to reflect Take time to praise God, worship Him. It does mean for us sometimes we're busier on a Sunday than we are on the rest of the week. But you have to pick one day where you will just be spending time with God more than your usual 10-minute devotions every day. So there's the rhythms that God has built into creation that we should take advantage of. And let's live by these principles. Because if you work seven days a week, 16 hours a day, at some point, you're going to break. That happened to me uh, some time ago when I was working two, not just two, but three jobs. And I almost uh, spent enough time at home. And my kids were just growing. You know, I have two kids back then. Um, one was the eldest, Yula, and she, she was a toddler then and uh, a newborn. I have a newborn, Eunice. And I would come home just mainly to sleep. And I would do that until such time that I came home. My eldest didn't know me anymore. He didn't know that I was his, her papa or his dada, daddy. And that broke my heart and made me think, what will I do? Then I quit my job. I just had one job. Because life is more important. Family is more important, right? Than just living your life frazzled and burnt out. And so friends, we learn by the rhythms that God has built into creation. But not only that, we also learn from the wisdom that God has built into creation. That's the third advice for us today. Live by the wisdom that God has built into creation. Proverbs 6, 6 to 8. We can go to an object lesson. We will go to the ant. Look at the ant. Not talking about your tita. <laughs> Not talking about your uh, aunts. But the ant. Langam. Why can we learn from the ant? It's part of creation, right? Go to the ant, O sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief officer or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. Friends, what is wrong with us when we don't take God's object lesson and we just look at the world and how the world operates. God has given us the simple illustration of an ant without anyone lording it over the, over the, oh, lording it over the ant, supervising it. He knows what to do. He's a self-starter. He's someone who doesn't need to be told what to do. If you are a worker and you, are, you have a boss, you don't need your boss to tell you what to do. You don't need other people to tell you what to do. You're supposed to do your job with excellence because that's God's will for you. You want, you want to be a powerful witness at work, not someone who is, the, who is the object of gossip by because you're one of those lazy people at work. Do you come on time for work? Do you, uh, do you uh, help others uh, and go above and beyond? Or maybe you work from home. And you say, well, maybe I could just put in a little work today. Nobody can see me. Nobody can see me, right? Uh, I work from home. You know, I can probably cheat my way into some uh, timesheet out there and uh, just say instead that I worked full uh, eight hours 
but actually I just work part of the day. Friends, how are we with regards to our character? Do we live and treat, treat all of this as a character issue? Do we live by the rhythms that God has built into creation? But most especially, do we live from the wisdom that God has built into creation? Look at the ant. He's a self-starter. And what does he do? She prepares her bread in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. In Tagalog, is what we call may, kung may tinanim, pag may tinanim, may nilaga o mayroong aanihin. Okay? And this is what we do. And it's not just for people who are successful in life, but for especially for God's people. Why? Because we are working for the King. We are working for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the one who has come down from heaven. The King of heaven has come down to us. And we are now witnesses for him because we have received the life of Jesus in our lives. Therefore, the Holy Spirit empowers us and equips us so that we are able to do anything. You can do everything in the name and power of the Lord Jesus. We can do exceedingly abundantly beyond all we can ever ask, think, or imagine. Why? Because of God's power in us. And you say to yourself, I still struggle. I know all that. I've heard it again today and I know all that, but I'm still struggling. What is my problem? Well, maybe the problem is you are really looking into yourself. You're really thinking that I can do this. I can, I, I can build my own, uh, my own success. I can, I can make myself successful. I don't need others. It's just me, myself, and I. See, that's where the beauty of the gospel comes in. And as we take communion today, I would like to point to you right now. You can take your elements with you. And we will start communion in a short while. The beauty of the gospel, friends, is that those who trust in Jesus... Those who trust in his son need never again live apart from God. Amen. That's the truth that we all should be reminded of. Because in Christ, we are secure. In Christ, we are loved. In Christ, we are whole. We are made whole. In Christ, we are chosen. In Christ, we are pure and upright. Amen. We should believe that. We should believe that in our hearts. We are special because of what Christ has done for us. In fact, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9, 10, and this is where we'll end. It says there, For in Christ all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ you have been brought to fullness. Friends, you might feel today that your life is incomplete. That life is so hard and it's so, life is so much a struggle right now. But friends, there are some things that God is accomplishing in your life that you don't even know He is doing. Underneath all this struggle, He's doing a special thing in your life. My question is this, are you allowing Him to do that? Are you surrendering your life daily to him? See Galatians 2, 20 says, For I am crucified with Christ, and yet it is not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. Right? Not by sight. You live it by faith. In whom? In the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It is not you. It is God's power in you that will make you able to not be like the sluggard, but instead be an upright man, woman of God. How do you make use, wise use of your time in 2021? You have to give up those small surrenders, make 
the most of every opportunity. Don't make any more excuses as it would lead to uh, unfulfilled desires. But more so, you should treat this lesson in your life today as a character issue. God wants to transform you. God wants to be like your son, his son. You should live by the rhythms and learn from the wisdom that God has built into creation. Let's just pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we praise you today, Lord. Now that Christ has redeemed us to a life of love and service, we can now reflect to others what he has done for us. And Father, as we take communion, Lord, my prayer is that you will remind us of the ultimate sacrifice on that cross. When your son gave up his life for us, it is something that we all could just look and reflect upon and be reminded of. Because today as we are taking the bread, we will remember the broken body of Christ. And because of his brokenness, we are now healed. We are whole. We are made whole. And as we take the bread, the, the juice or the cup, which is a symbol of his blood, we partake of his death when his blood was shed on that cross. Because without the blood, without the remission of blood, without the, 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 the shedding of blood, there will be no remission of sins. And our sins won't be forgiven. Therefore, Lord, we take this time of communion in remembrance of what you did. Search our hearts right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So let's just take a few moments. Uh, take the bread right now and the cup. And let's um, remember the Lord's words to us. On the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and he has given thanks. He broke the bread and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's all partake of the bread. Thank you, Lord. In the same time after supper, he took the cup. Again, after, after giving thanks and praise, he said, take this cup as the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, you will proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's all partake of the cup. So now we have partaken the bread and the cup and we proclaim the Lord's death and we will wait for his coming. And let's ask our brother Chad to close us in this session of uh, his word and a prayer of thanksgiving offered. Let's pray. Our Lord, our God, we thank you for your unfailing love and uh, unconditional love by dying on the cross to save us from our sins. So thank you for allowing us to partake the communion as we remember your life on earth, your teachings, your death and resurrection. Help us to continue to surrender to your will and be guided as we use our time wisely for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 All right, thank you, Pastor Alvin, for that wonderful message. And um, before we go to our uh, closing prayer and benediction by Pastor Alvin, I'd just like to inform everyone that uh, our announcement part of our program would not, be any, would not anymore be done during our worship service. But instead, uh, we're, we're making a little bit of change. It's going to be presented uh, uh, through a slideshow prior to the start of our worship service every Sunday. So uh, we, we started that today. And uh, for those of you who missed it, uh, the presentation of our announcements, um, I'd just like to quickly remind uh, Brother Icon 
Uh, you are going to be our worship service facilitator next Sunday, uh, January 17th. Okay, so if you uh, have some questions, uh, feel free to message uh, any one of us, either Ako. Brother Jed and uh, Sister Jo or Ate Lori or any one of us. Okay, so I think that's all for today. We um, close our service this afternoon with a prayer from uh, Pastor Alvin. Let's pray. Gracious God, when we fall out of step with you, draw us closer to abide in you, O Lord. Um, allow us to realize our pace in our lives right now. And now we can spend more time with you, O Lord, getting in step with you. Teach us to number our days aright so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Help us, Lord, to redeem the time for the days are evil. Allow us not to waste the opportunities that are presented before us. As we go out to live this life that you've given us, Lord, into the world, allow us, Lord, to live in the spirit and in step with the spirit. Mm. So that, Lord, nothing could harm us. Nothing could, could be an obstacle in our way. And like a level highway, Lord, we will live an upright life and not live the way of the sluggard. But instead... Look into your creation, worship you with all our hearts, mind, soul, and strength. And set a time each, each, each week, Lord, to just study your word, meditate on it. Be able, Lord, to uh, reflect on your goodness in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you are a loving God. And we confess, Father, that we often fail. But with you, Lord, with you in, our, in, in us, and with the help and encouragement of the brethren, we know, Lord, that we can um, move forward in 2021. We love you, Lord, and we just want to say that tonight, today. We worship you, and now may the grace, may the love of the Father, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet fellowship of the Spirit be to all of us, both here now and forever. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone, and uh, see you all next Sunday. Have a great and a blessed week. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, visitors. The Maliaris. Yeah. Elsa Wardek. To have you with us again. Wardek. You want to see you, Wardek? <laughs> Or next. So, wala tayo sa Tuesday, ah? Canceled. Yeah. Oh. yeah thanks. Sure. Thanks for that. Uh, it's on. It's in the uh, slide actually. So, we'll just update it. Okay. So, nothing on Tuesday. No uh, food bank. Oh, that's for the food bank. Yeah, that's for the food bank. He just uh, just canceled. Mm. Hi, BJ, Rachel. My sister Ching, brother Tom. Salamat po. God bless. All right. Hi, Nanay. Nanay, katapos na. Nanay, bebing. Nanay, bebing. Katapos na tupi. Bye bye. Bye, we're exiting. No, I know this thing, Jan. The topic is teaching, ako. Pa ang yung topic para sa akin talaga yun. Tama ito. Tinamaan talaga bulsa. Okay, see you next Bible study, ha. Sinabihan na kita eh. Every Saturday may sakit na ako. Ano yan ha? Ito talaga. I'll try. Every other Saturday lang naman ang Bible study. Sige, I'll try. Sige na, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.